Board of Trustees of Harris County Department of Education now convened in a board meeting on Wednesday, August 18, 2021. In the boardrooms at 6300 Houston, Houston, I mean, Irvington Boulevard, Houston, Texas, at 1.04 p.m. I wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone present and this meeting, uh, everyone present and at this meeting of the Board of Trustees. As trustees, we are here to set goals, listen to reports, uh, listen to reports from the superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, personnel appointments, and make policy decisions for the district. It is not the role of the board to make day-to-day -day operational decisions. The management and day-to-day -day operations of the department are the responsibility of the superintendent. We have policies and procedures in place to resolve concerns and issues. This is a public meeting of the Board of Trustees, not a meeting of the public. Prior to this meeting, board members received information related to items on today's agenda. Agenda items will not necessarily be handled in the order listed on the notice. This meeting is open to all who wish to attend and hear the matters discussed. During the course of this meeting, the board may determine that a closed session is necessary in that event, the board will uh, meet in a closed session to consider matters duly posted for this meeting as permitted by section 551.071 to 551.084, inclusive, inclusive of the Texas Government Code. I respectfully ask that you please refrain from talking while others are speaking and that all cell phones uh, are turned off or on the silent mode. Thank you for taking the time today to join us for your interest in Harris County Department of Education. We will now have the invocation from Ms. Edna Johnson from Purchasing. Good afternoon. Please bow your head. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to serve our students, their families, and the school systems in the surrounding area. Father God, we understand that too much is given, much is required. Therefore, we ask that you please protect us, allow us to lead with wisdom through your guidance, and bless us as we embark on the new school year. And all of these we ask in your son's name, amen. Amen. And now we have the Pledge of Allegiance to the U.S. flag and the Texas flag by Natalia Sumner. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will have the open forum, uh, which is the public participation pursuant to policy BED local. A citizen who wish to speak may do so by completing a participation request card available at the board meeting at least 10 minutes prior to the board meeting. And I haven't, have not got any requests for public participation, so we will move past that. So now we will go to the reports and presentations. Um, we will go to uh, item, agenda item 5A, which is the employee of the month, which will be, uh, which will be facilitated by uh, Natasha Truitt, Executive Director of Human Resources. Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here today to introduce our very first employee of the month recipient as part of HCDE's newly launched recognition program. The Employee of the Month program is designed to encourage recognition of HCDE employees who willingly take initiative beyond regular assignments, demonstrates a high quality of work and commitment to completing duties, works as a team member, and uses creativity, innovation, and collaboration to enhance performance. The first employee to receive this designation is Cindy Tan, our IT training coordinator. Cindy began working at HCDE in December of 2020. Her role was created out of the vital need to equip employees with the tools and knowledge necessary to work in a virtual environment. Cindy is well known across HCDE and is responsible for providing training to hundreds of employees. She has created several training series such as Techie Thursday, ITU, Munch and Learn, and has introduced us to LinkedIn Learning. 
The school's division nominated Cindy for the Employee of the Month Award based on Cindy's outstanding work in collaborating with them on a professional development project. Dr. Charles Ned, Senior Director of Schools, noted that Cindy's motivation, attention to detail, and willingness to think outside the box elevated their professional learning day to a new level. Specifically, Cindy secured incentives for participants, worked with the communications divisions on promotions and a video, and collaborated with staff on all documents for training and registration. Dr. Ned shared that Cindy took full ownership of the project and kept him updated throughout the process. He said working with Cindy allowed him to better understand how resourceful, creative, and reliable she is. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to our first employee of the month, Miss Cindy Tan. Congratulations to Cindy. She is truly awesome. And we have a certificate and gift for Cindy, but I think Cindy has some remarks she would like to uh, express. Thank you, Natasha, for letting me come and say a few words. Board of Trustee, General Counsel, and Mr. Colbert, I am so grateful to be the recipient of this award. I must tell you, I am loving the premium parking space. <laughs> First, <laughs> thank you for the privilege of coming to work every day, and I consider this a privilege. Uh, to come to work to serve and to make a difference by providing engaging and vital training by using existing resource to sow the seeds of IT training to equip our staff with the tools and resource and knowledge training to equip our staff with the necessary tools to work in a virtual environment. Next, I'd like to thank all the people I work with across the organization, including our community business sponsors. Whenever IT training needed anything, everyone from across all division came together to help. Thank you so much for your support. I would like to thank especially my supervisor, Lowell Ballard, who encouraged, empowered, and inspire me to develop, planned, and implemented the new IT training program at HCDE. Lastly, I want to thank all of the HCDE learners who attended all the different training that Natasha just mentioned, whether it be LinkedIn Learning, Techie Thursday, ITU Tuesdays, or Munch and Learn with our champion, or the newly rollout Virtual Tech Day with schools. You came, but you came in numbers. Not only you came, but you came with a growth mindset, ready to learn. For that reason, IT will be here, We're ready to plan training, IT training with vital training, with rigor going forward for you. So keep coming, keep coming, because let us continue to train, to, to plant more seed. And what kind of seed are we planting? Seeds of learning, because why? Because we are going to Grow where we are planted, right here, right now, at HCDE. So thank you <laughs> for, for the honor of being recognized and, and being, uh, being chosen and recognized at HCDE very first Employee of the Month. Kind of crowd around as close as you can.
thirsty. All right, this way, everybody. Big smiles with your eyes. One more time. Here we go. Right. We will now move on to agenda item 5B, which is superintendent monthly report by uh, Superintendent James Colbert. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've got four things to update the board on this month. Uh, the first is a bit of bad news. Uh, several weeks ago, August 2nd, uh, James Edgar, the former president of our foundation, passed away. Uh, he was involved in a car accident off of Westheimer. Uh, he had a 10-year-old son, a wife. Um, and died at 44. So my son and I were able to attend his funeral. Genuine man, even when everybody had left the foundation, James Ecker still chose to be a part of our foundation and lead it. Uh, even took my son under his wing and sent them, brought him over to his house. And you know, he's a business major and just tried to mentor him, sent him books, did everything. So guy was truly a public servant. Um, he had an ex excellent service, but he'll be missed. So uh, let's be thinking about Mr. Edgar. Uh, two or three other things, and these are all good things. Tools for teachers. All right. Let me tell you about tools for teachers. Um, this is an initiative that was originally created by one of our trustees, Mrs. Duhon. And she had an idea, and I remember, I, th I don't know if you called me or met with me, but she was pitching it, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And she's like, I'm telling you, I talk to these teachers all the time, and they're complaining about how they don't have enough materials and how they got to pay out of their pocket to buy this, that, and the other. So ultimately, we decided to do this initiative, and we put, I believe, $200,000 to our foundation to come up with this initiative where Teachers could apply for a voucher and get a $100 voucher to get materials to start the beginning of the school year. Um, I want you to know that we had 20 districts respond, that we sold out in four hours. That fast, gone. Uh, we have a waiting list of 1,000 teachers um, and Katie was the biggest district to respond and certainly moving forward in our next, bu next budget cycle, this is something that I'll be bringing back to the board, but we'll need to double the amount of money because it's certainly something that is a need in the county. So I'd like to thank Mrs. Duhon for her innovative idea and this is excellent. So uh, comps did a great department, Ms. Sparks did a good department, did a good job um, in getting all that facilitated. Uh, next thing I'd like to tell you is obviously y'all know by now that I canceled convocation and that's difficult for me to do. Uh, you'll know why shortly in a few days. Um, can you fix this? There's a ton of feedback in this mic. Um, I was planning on having this huge convocation. We we're going to have seven, eight hundred people in this coliseum. We picked the biggest coliseum we could find in Houston, the Berry Center. Uh, we've gone out and I've done visits there. We've decided how we were going to set everything up, blah, 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 blah. Um, but this was back in April. I really struggled. Like, were we going to be able to do a face-to-face -face convocation come August? And it was a difficult decision. I really spent quite some time trying to decide what is August going to look like in Harris County. And so I gambled and said, you know what, let's go for it. I think things are going to be better. We're going to be ready to come together. Convocation is a big starting event for the school year. The staff enjoys it, blah, 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 blah. Well, ultimately, uh, just weeks from convocation, you know, this Delta variant has really kind of taken a turn for the worse. And I started seeing the accelerated growth of how people were catching and becoming a positive with COVID. So uh, having to put ego aside, decided that it wasn't safe to bring so many people together, no matter how much we spread out. 
Uh, I didn't feel comfortable with that, and conscience, could, conscience couldn't allow it, so I canceled it. So Friday, we will have a virtual convocation. Friday morning at 9 a.m. And so y'all need to tune in, look in your emails. There's going to be a little link for you to click on where you can watch it. Um, there are going to be uh, some special guests in this convocation. Um, there's certainly the theme, the theme of our convocation. Y'all have your, yeah, uh, let's rodeo. You'll understand why that's happening in there once you get to our, our virtual. Yeah, you see the bandanas, you know. Uh, don't put them around your head or anything like that. We don't want anybody thinking any gang stuff. <laughs> but we've got more stuff coming out. We've got masks and lanyards, and so y'all will get that stuff moving forward too. But I'd really like to invite you to tune in Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, we're doing something a little different this year. We're doing the service awards on Thursday. That's tomorrow at 9 a.m. So tomorrow at 9 a.m. we'll run a video to honor all those employees who've been employed with us for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25 years. And then on Friday at 9 a.m., we'll have the actual convocation. So make sure you dial into that. And finally, um, I, I want to turn, turn my, the mic over for the rest of my time to Mrs. Seagraves, who's going to introduce a very special young lady. You know, we, we try to start really recognizing some of the talented students that we have in Harris County. And last month, we recognized some students from Case Debate. Today, we'd like to recognize one, a very special young lady from our Scholastic program. Ms. Seagraves, take Thank it away. You. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is a complete honor to stand before you and introduce the star of today's meeting. Um, she is a rising senior at Carnegie Vanguard High School in HISD. Her name is Keichi Mba, and she is a Houston native. She was selected, she entered her piece here at the regional level um, at our, in our Scholastic Art and Writing Awards program and was selected to win a national gold medal. Out of the national gold medalist, only five national student poets are selected from the entire nation and she is one of them. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of background information about her and then let her come up and, and say a few words. So um, the National Student Poets Program is the nation's highest honor for young poets creating original work. Again, annually five students are selected for one year of service. So this year she will be traveling and hosting poetry readings, creating and leading poetry workshops, attending events as special guests and readers. And that will look different for each of the poets, but it's basically a year of service. And it will end with, well actually launch with, sorry. Um, hopefully, we're, our fingers are crossed that they still get to go. Um, to a planned appointment ceremony at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library in Washington, D.C. in September. So, all of that is very exciting. Let me tell you a little bit about her and let her come up. She's a rising senior. She'll start Monday at Carnegie Vanguard High School. She founded her school's poetry club in late 2019. She serves as an editor for her school's award-winning liter literary magazine, The Courtyard. She first found a love for poetry when she stumbled upon a YouTube video of a Brave New Voices slam competition in the fall of 2019 and has been performing and writing poetry ever since. Her poetry explores many avenues from making the known strange to chronicling her experiences as a Nigerian American and the histories of her people. She is also passionate about strengthening her community and serves on the activism and community outreach committee of her school's Black Student Union and has interned with NASA to help address problems within the food supply chain. She advanced to the semifinals of the 2020 Space City Slam, Houston's largest teen slam competition, before it was canceled due to COVID. Her work can be found or is forthcoming in Blue Marble Review, the Incandescent Review, and elsewhere. Please help me honor and welcome Keichi Mba. I wanted to thank the Harris County Department of Education for helping host the Scholastic Art and Writing Award, which is what helped me eventually lead um, to getting this award. And uh, I was told that you might have a few questions or something, etc. So I'm here to answer them. Um, 
Well, I guess I could share a little bit about myself. Um, uh, well, she shared a lot, but um, I recently got into poetry, and during the pandemic, I had a lot of extra time to write, and so I feel like that helped me grow a lot, and I'm really into creative writing, and I'm also uh, uh, into STEM. Um, I, like she said, I interned with NASA this past summer. I was over interning at uh, Johnson Space Center, and so I have um, roots or uh, interests in both the STEM and the humanities. Um, and um, I'm really honored to receive this award. Uh, with this award, I'll be able to focus, I'm the National Student Poet of the Southwest, so I'll be able to do different um, community service projects and create my own with the backing of the National Student uh, po Poets Program and basically go to elementary schools and middle schools and go to libraries and host different events, um, doing uh, poetry workshops, et cetera, and getting kids into poetry and let, allowing them to see like the beauty of the art. Um, and yeah, that's. <laughs> Superintendent Culver has a question for you. I, I have a question for you. Now you are a very, very, very extraordinarily talented young lady. Thank you. And I think I know the answer to the question I'm going to ask you. What university are you going to go to next year? <laughs> Say the University of Texas. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to apply. I have, a, I have an older brother there. But yeah, um, I, I don't know. I have a lot of schools on my list. But yeah. Hey, UT needs you. <laughs> Tr Trusty Dick. Why would you go to UT when you go to Rice? <laughs> Why would you go to now. UT or Rice? Why not Columbia? <laughs> <laughs> it's a recruiting session. Yes. <laughs> Any questions for? Just congratulations. Yeah. We're very proud of you. You represent yourself well, and certainly I know you represent your family and your school, and certainly this county well. Thank so you. continue doing your great work and keep being ambitious and audacious, and we appreciate you. So thank you. Indeed. Yeah. Oh. Trustee I don't really have a question. It's more of a comment. Uh, you said I have interest in both the humanities and in science and STEM. And as an engineer, I just want to say to you that those two things are—they don't stand alone. They—they they actually are useful together. Um, and as an engineer, I can tell you that any person in STEM will tell you that you must have an artist's heart to really do well in the sciences because you have to be able to be creative. So continue down both pathways. One is not more important than the other. They're both very, very important. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Trustee Cantu. Is it Keichi? Yes, it's Keichi. Hate to put you on the spot, but could you share some of your poetry with us? Uh, yes, I can. Um, one second. Let me go. Let me just pull it up. So um, I'm going to read this. This was a part of the original collection that I um, had sent to Scholastic's uh, writing um, Art and Writing Awards, which had gotten me a regional gold, which then a national gold, and then eventually to be a national student poet. Um, this poem is called, uh, My Great Grandfather Had Nine Wives. Um, okay, I'll just go ahead and read it. Um, my great grandfather had nine wives. Until the lions have their own historians, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Chinue Achebe. Egu aduru ato afo uburu uzo. My great-grandfather's squinting eyes drew haze over the horizon belonging to my great-grandmother, creating a painting of African sun. She was a woman of the earth. The earth made woman of her. Dirt-laced fingers and sand-peppered knees spoke love to corn and cassava, praying only to the god she held within her bosom. At the rise of afternoon, pestle etched callus as she pounded for food into brown freckled mortar. Like all men, my great-grandfather admired. 
his yellowed eyes enchanted by her flat nose and cow belly plump lips, to her skin peeled ripe from ebony and hips swept wide for birth, to the sweet smell of a hard working woman. So he grew chest and three goats to bring back to her village, and she agreed to be his seventh wife. O tu mi wete bele, drums beat to the laughter of pot bellied men, wine carrying is the wedding. My great grandfather squatted hidden in Maria bush leaves, while my great grandmother's feet kissed the ground to its pulsing rhythm, red wrapper bouncing to her waist, palm wine swimming in the ivory tusk of her forefathers. She searched through purple plume grass and behind corkwood trees, only finding men pretending to be my great grandfather, until the rustle of Maria bush leaves seized her eyes, tusk weighed his hands, palm wine touched his lips and a river stretched out around their families. Umanu akara diotu, onye ratu, ibe yararatu. My great-grandfather's land can make a village, splitting vasts of Dutch rich colors, for each wife had a house of her own, and they stuck together tightly. Clay, woman, bamboo stick, children, leading to feasts that were long and winding. Sun-fed siblings chasing behind the shadows of their mothers, and snapping stomachs waiting for their dent of gab gari to be filled with okra soup, the open air hugging them tenderly. Yeah. Thank you. I got three things for you. Before you go, I got three things for you. First of all, First of all, uh, your grandfa great grandfather having nine wives is a tribute for any. Uh, I, I remember somebody said it. Having one wife is, is uh, have, being married for 14 years, having one wife is a, is a, a lot. So having nine, <laughs> your grandfather and nine apparently nine homes to, to house them is, is something amazing that I, I have yet to to to, to, to so so. <laughs> kudos, you come from very 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 good stock because because that's probably all the wives in here will probably say my husband and he, uh, he he can't can't get no more wives so. Also, I, I want to echo. I also want to echo uh, Trustee Hannah says We also we both study STEM, and and we also have a love for humanity. That's part of what we do up here. So I will definitely say keep going. Uh, I had a few friends that we that actually we went to school with that actually were uh, that end up going to NASA. So I say keep down the path you're going. Use it all. It's very 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 rewarding, and, and it, it it is a very big need. And lastly, I will say for poetry. Uh, Few know that I actually dabbled in poetry. When I was your age, I think I was mainly dabbling to, to impress girls. So it was, my, my, my focus was way different at your age. So uh, kudos that you're actually trying to do it for, for the betterment of humanity as opposed to selfish needs. But uh, one of the things that I, I actually, uh, for those lawyers up here, they'll know one of the bar scholarships I got was through a poetry contest. I wasn't going to take a bar class, but I actually wrote a poem and got a, a bar scholarship. And that's one, one of the reasons I took it. So. Continue, I'll, I'll say all that to say, keep doing what you're doing. I'm very proud of you and, and looking forward to seeing more greatness come out of you. So thank, thank you very you. much. You. All right. So we will now move on to agenda item 5C, the annual division update on schools by Dr. Charles Ned. Thank you very much, um, Board of Trustees, Mr. Colbert, General Counsel Langua. That's a tough act to follow, but I'm here. <laughs> and for the second time in a calendar year, I get to present highlights to you. You don't have a poem with you? <laughs> no, no poem, sir, right? I do not. <laughs> but I will bring highlights to you all from the schools division. So, and I have. <laughs> so one of the things that you know, for me, it's, it's a privilege to be able to stand in front of you and showcase the work that the amazing staff we have here at HCD within the school division have done. Uh, again, I joined the team in December, so in the short stint that I've been here, I've been able to interact with some amazing, an amazing group of people, a phenomenal group of leaders, and obviously, in spite of the pandemic, we continue to trudge forward with carrying out the mission and the goals of HCDE Schools Division at each campus uh, each and every day. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that believes this, but the Schools Division is the heartbeat of the Harris County Department of Education. 
And so I'll share with you a few highlights as to why I believe that. So in addition to the invaluable guidance and leadership that Mr. Parker brings to the schools division, I'm also, I lean heavily on the schools division central office team to address the day-to-day -day needs of our campuses. And although I prefer to acknowledge the team individually due to the absence of time, uh, I'd like to ask team members of the central office staff to please stand and be recognized. It's an amazing group of professionals uh, that, again, taking me under their wing and showing me the way uh, has been something that I'm extremely appreciative of for each and every one of you. So I value your commitment to the organization and what you bring to our division each and every day. Thank you. As for our campuses, uh, they're also led by a phenomenal group of principals. And it goes without saying that in light of what this past school year has presented them with, they've come up with innovative ways in which to continue to move instruction forward, as well as provide services at their respective campuses. So at this time, would our building principals please stand and be recognized? And as you can see, uh, Several months ago, Ms. Dr. Trevino Jones was in the minority, but now she's in the majority, so <laughs> things have flipped. <laughs> so again, thank you all to our principals. I appreciate you and all the work that you do uh, to move our students and our campuses forward each and every day. So a little bit about our schools division. Uh, as all of you know, we do partner with ISDs and charter school districts to provide services to their students. Uh, our schools are TA approved and we have three unique programs designed for students with behavioral, intellectual, and developmental disabilities as well as substance use disorders. In summary, our, goals, uh, is, our goal is to provide high quality instruction in a safe and secure learning environment. Uh, we also place a heavy emphasis on personalized instruction and building relationships with our students. And this is reflected in a professional development made available to staff. Our ABS East and West Campus, uh, our district's contract with those campuses to provide highly specialized services to students with emotional and academic social uh, special needs. Uh, one of the components that's centered around that, I know that during se several of the board walks, uh, board members had an opportunity to go out and visit and see our staff in action in dealing with students in crisis. And that's really the part that sets them apart from what happens in a traditional school setting in terms of really being able to work with students with these emotional uh, disabilities and be very successful in doing so. Fortis Academy is the place for our students that need instru an instructional setting that combines substance use coaching and counseling with academics. The small family-like atmosphere contributes to students being open about their substance use and receptive to the counseling and treatment available at Fortis. Our Fort Specialty School, High Point East, offers a highly structured learning environment for students who've been removed from their home district for violations of the Student Code of Conduct. In addition to a robust academic course offerings, various structures are built into the day to teach students self-discipline, coping skills, as well as decision, proper decision making so that they're able to make better choices. In total, we provide services to 41 school districts. And during the course of the 2020-21 school year, uh, 370 students were served by Harris County Department of Education schools. And although I had a, a multitude of, of images, photos, and videos, here are just a few images of, of what was a very active year for the schools division, uh, from project-based learning to celebrating our graduating class of 2021. Also, here are some snapshots from uh, the event held most recently, which is our back-to-school professional development. 
Uh, we had the all schools division staff August 10th, August 11th, uh, in which we engaged them with um, relevant engaging speakers and sessions that really spoke to the work that they would need to prepare for uh, when the students step foot on campus on this upcoming Monday. And we also held our first ever virtual technology day. Uh, that was uh, in conjunction with working and collaborating with our employee of the month, Cindy Tan, uh, to really bring virtual technology sessions to our staff. Uh, this is something that, you know, we dangled a few incentives in front of them. Uh, one was if you registered for a session, you received a T-shirt, which every campus took a photo. I only provided the photo from ABS East. And we also did incentives for individuals that registered for two or more sessions. And we did door prizes for those individuals. And Mr. Park is presenting one of our employees with a door prize. So it was very successful. And it's something that we continue to build upon. Uh, you have been very supportive in terms of being able to provide our teachers with technology, mobile devices that they need in order to facilitate instruction in class. And so we want to make sure that they have the necessary training and access to the tools so that they can utilize this and make this an invaluable resource. And finally, on behalf of the entire schools division, I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees for their support as we continue to make an impact in Harris County, one student at a time. Thank you. Superintendent Cobra. I would just like to say our schools division does an exceptional job working with a challenging population. Um, Probably one of the things that I love the most about going to our campuses is that if you didn't know any better, you would think that all the students there never had any issues when they were at their traditional campus. Mm -hmm. And every student that's on our campuses has had some unique problem that that campus has struggled to find a solution for. And when they come to our campuses, yes, we acknowledge the problem, but it's only just a speed bump. Mm -hmm. And so, um, having been in the profession for quite some time and that's the population that I specialized in that's what makes our campuses so unique it's the people the employees it's the fact that we love on the kids and we're not trying to punish them uh, but we're just trying to make them better and I say it all the time there's three things that campuses like ours can do you can either punish a child or you can house a child or you can do what we do is which is try to make that child better and stronger when we send them back to their ISD so Good job to you, Dr. Ned, and your staff, our principals. I look forward to y'all having a great year this year. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will now move on to agenda item 5D. Uh, other reports from board members uh, concerning attendance or participation in a board AC or ACDE related conference, event, activity, or committee. Accolades for ACDE staff members or any other deserving person. Is there any? Uh, any input from any of the board members? Seeing none, we move on to agenda item 5E, report of board committees from the committee chairs. Are there any committee chair reports? Seeing none, we will move on to the uh, monthly financial reports through, uh, ju through July 31st, 2021 by Dr. Jesus Amesqua, Assistant Superintendent for Business Services. Okay, the first report is uh, financial highlights as of July 31st. This is the 11th month of, of the year. All our information is posted on our website. Uh, our balance sheet as of July 31st is uh, assets of 39,370,461, uh, liabilities of 2,397,342, and equity of 37,507,438, with excess of revenues over, over resources as of July of four million one hundred thirty-seven thousand six fifty-seven. The uh, uh, on, on audited fund balance um, as of uh, July, uh, we have uh, thirty-nine million three hundred seventy thousand four sixty-one, of which four point one million of that is from the current year, 
Again, we will close out the year uh, in August uh, in two weeks, and we'll begin the process to uh, uh, perform the, or go through the annual audit so that we can uh, get a better read as to how we're going to end up the year. Our ratios as of July 31st, uh, percentage of fund balance and expenditures ratio were at 38% versus 43% last year. Working capital ratio, the same, 37 million. On assigned fund balance ratio, we're at 48% versus 52% from a year ago. Uh, and our debt to income ratio is 10% versus 6% from, from a year ago. Tax revenue to total revenue ratio, we're at 18%. Uh, indirect cost ratio, we're at 3%, the same as last year. Our fee-for-service uh, revenue ratio, we're at 28%, a little bit higher than, than a year ago. And then our, our growth uh, ratio is at uh, minus 10%. Uh, we have some uh, uh, fee-for-services that uh, are not coming in in, in the current year. Uh, fund balance uh, uh, activity, we had uh, several uh, amendments throughout, uh, throughout the year. Um, as of July, we have uh, total revenues received or billed of 134974431 In the general fund, we're at 87% or $50,499,661 out of the $58 million budget. In our expenditures, uh, year to date, we're uh, encumbered or spent, we're at $110,604,724. And in the general fund, including encumbrances, uh, we're at 68%, uh, which is uh, 46 million. 362,005, which is a very good uh, ratio because um, it is below the, uh, the, the linear uh, expectation for, for general fund. Our COVID expenditures in the general fund, we still have 937,579. And we're receiving additional COVID uh, um, grants in the last few months. Uh, and so we have a total of uh, available 2,445,744 in COVID uh, expenditures, grants from Health and Human Services. Our donations reports year to date, we're at uh, $53,997.62. Um, between cash and in-kind um, donations. For this month, we had two from adult ed and, and technology donations received. Uh, this is a comparison um, in our uh, uh, pr property values, and uh, what I wanted to highlight here, and later on we'll talk a little bit, uh, about this a little bit more. We started the year with a projection of 511 billion, of which um, we, go we, we thought we we're going to have a 511 billion at the end certified, and we're right now only at 506 billion. So you will see where that, uh, how that will impact us uh, uh, down the road. Uh, so uh, looking at the scenarios, uh, we will see approximately $240,000 less in terms of our levy based on that uh, reduction in that reduction in values. Our collections year to date, we're at 99% holding strong, 99.1, uh, 25 million, 19,739. And our uh, fees that we've paid uh, year to date, 684,516. As I mentioned, we're ahead of last year. Uh, we're 99.1 versus 96.4 a year ago. Uh, the uh, HCAD fees uh, for the new year are going to be 525,000, similar to what we had a year ago. We received uh, the estimate from the uh, tax assessor collector. Um, I'm gonna just glance through this right now because there's a separate uh, agenda later on. Uh, our values that came in are 521 billion, uh, and so I'll go through this presentation later on, so just know that we'll, we'll go through that in detail when we get to, to the uh, agenda item on the, on the tax rate. Uh, our uh, disbursements uh, for, the, uh, um, for the month were 3,550,218, uh, 362 checks, 538 transactions, and six transfers. Uh, our segment information data for educational certification uh, you see the variance of minus 393,296. Uh, records management, 526,354. Uh, we're projected to uh, uh, recognize all the revenue here in August, which will uh, uh, wipe out uh, most of the records management uh, uh, variance. 
The school-based uh, therapy, we're at uh, 1,997,823. It runs around an 84% uh, uh, subsidy, uh, sales, uh, sales um, sustaining. Uh, schools, um, again, subsidized to the tune of 4,125,599. Uh, choice partners, um, and this is where Jeff will jump up somewhere in back there. Um, it's uh, um, at a, an amount of 1,469,612 uh, above the ratio or at a 69% ratio um, as of July. Amendments for the uh, for the month of August, we have four, four major ones uh, in general fund, grants, and facilities, and choice partners. Um, uh, the first one is uh, adult education, 14436 an increase in the budget for some service revenue received. And then legal services uh, between uh, line item accounts of 100000 and thus just between one account to another, just so we can uh, uh, distribute that to the different divisions. And then we have new grants for adult ed uh, for the new year that started in July, uh, 3,912,273. EL Civics Fund for Adult Ed, 457,727. Uh, HHS COVID-19 additional monies, 327,996. Early Head Start carryover funds from last year, uh, those were approved, 73,767. And then uh, carry over from COVID-19 also 48,069, which we're also asking that, uh, that you approve with a budget amendment accepting the HHS grant. Uh, Ms. Lenua uh, mentioned that uh, we can do that during the budget amendment, uh, accepting the grant from, from the rollover from HHS uh, as uh, identified here. And then uh, uh, CDPG DR grant adult debt uh, minus twenty nine thousand five hundred. That's to adjust to to uh, rollover amounts for for last year. Uh, legal services fund uh, again those are transferred between accounts twenty three thousand four seventy three with no effect on fund balance. And then choice partners as I mentioned uh, one million six hundred sixty nine thousand three thirty five. That money that's coming to the general fund from the choice partners as of July. And we're hoping that uh, that might um, uh, bring in a little bit more over two million projected in the, here in the, in August. Educational Foundation update: uh, Year to date, we have equity of 450,533, restricted of 580,585. They um, have receipts of 600. I'm sorry, 15,867, and dispersion of 631,000. Uh, 930, I mean 920, um, and all the detail, I'm just going to skip over those two. Those all, all the detail is included in our website for all the checks that have been uh, written. Um, and the disbursements uh, year to date, 647,470, service charges of $317.35. In the PFC, I uh, uh, have a facilities um, committee earlier today. Uh, we continue with a small business program for construction and including that in the, uh, in the competitive seal proposals uh, that we're preparing, and so we'll include those, uh, those requirements. Um, and so you have a total of uh, cash balance in the proper project acquisition uh, accounts for the PFC of 45439769 which includes the PFC list revenue bonds and the maintenance notes. Uh, that con includes the entire capital projects. Uh, year to date, uh, spend uh, has been 1,622,361, which is a 3% overall spend year to date. So it only gets to getting started. Only 3% we spend out of the capital project. Uh, that was the original proposal from August 3rd, 2020. And those are the bond issues that we issued for the maintenance note and the revenue bonds and the proceeds that, that as they were issued back in 2020. Pro other projects underway on their Head Start is the Coolwood Head Start. Uh, one property is closed, even property, and then uh, we're in the process of doing our due diligence so that we can set the closing for the Houston Parks Board. They signed their contract, and so now we just need to do a, the due diligence piece so that we can uh, set the closing date, uh, hopefully here real soon. That's the first report. Um, any questions before I go to the investment report? <coughs> uh, 
under the investment report, our portfolio is 84,374,247. PFC is 31,188,921. Mil it's and it's uh, invested in the various pools. 21% uh, in Techstar, 16% in Tech School, 43% in uh, Lone Star, Chase, and Texas Class. Uh, in the um, um, perf uh, PFC, um, the majority is in Tech Schools and, and then also Bank of Texas. And then in comparison from a year ago, um, it is uh, 44,550,704 more than a year ago. Um, and it's basically the proceeds that, that were received for some of our bonds. Uh, our funds are uh, pretty much uh, uh, short term uh, and we've earned uh, 19,451 and 6,329 interest at uh, 0 0.016. Um, um, the benchmark is 0.05, it's very, very short term. And you can see the progression that uh, next time it hopefully doesn't get any negative <laughs> into next month, uh, but it's very, very low at this time. Any questions on the on investment side? Nope, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mesquah. All right, before we move on to uh, the action item, uh, the action item con uh, consensus list, I believe uh, Trustee Davis had something from the governmental committee. No, I'll wait for the COVID. Agenda okay, item. okay, thank just, you. just making sure. All right, so we will now move on to the action items uh, under the consensus, uh, the consensus action item list. From what I understand, uh, action item 6A2 and 6A, I'm oh, sorry, not 6, 6 F, F6 need to be moved to the non-consensus list. Um, is there any, are there any others along with those, those two? Well, yeah, yeah. Any 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 trustees have any other action items that need to be moved to the non-consensus list other than six A two and six F six? Okay. Trustee Cantu wants to pull G one. Any others? Going once. All right, going twice, three times. All right, seeing none, we, uh, is there a motion, is there, can I get a, uh, is there a motion to move these three items to the non-consensus list? Oh, okay, yeah, so, okay. So can we get a, uh, a, so is there a motion to approve the consensus agenda without these three items? So moved. Oh, and seconded. It's been moved by Trustee Duhon and seconded by Trustee Dick. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move it for a vote. All in favor? Passes unanimously. All right, so now we will move to the non-consensus items, and we can start with um, 6A2, which is the monthly budget amendment report. Correct, and as um, Dr. Amesqua mentioned earlier during his presentation, um, this item does require a specific motion in order to approve the budget amendments and specifically accept the notice of award from Health and Human Services um, for the Head Start Division. And so I have a motion, sample motion written out if I have any volunteers. Thank you, Trustee Dick. Okay, so I move to approve item 6A2 budget amendments and to accept notice of award in a way. 06HP000311-02-04 from the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS Administration for Child and Families, ACF Office of Head Start, OHS for the Head Start Division in the amount of $136,836 for the period of September 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2021. All right, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. And second, it's, by, uh, it's been moved by Trustee Dick, seconded by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move it for a vote. All in favor? Passes unanimously. All right, we will now move on to agenda item 6F6. Uh, uh, six 
Yeah, so, and that's the approval contract uh, award for job number, uh, job number 21-066-DR, adolescent, uh, adolescent recovery support and counseling services. Is there a motion? Wait, sorry, this one requires a specific motion as oh. well that I have a, a sample for because, thank you, Trustee Dick, <laughs> being considering volunteering, um, because the my understanding is that this RFP has a really tight timeline, and although um, the proposals have been submitted and have been scored and evaluated, they have, the, the administration has not yet had the opportunity to go to contact the first ranked um, to attempt to negotiate a contract. Mm -hmm. um, and so what the motion is, is to delegate authority to the superintendent and or his designee to make the award after the negotiation process takes place and to negotiate, finalize, and execute a service contract and to bring that final contract back to the board for ratification at the September regular board meeting. Okay. So I believe Trustee Dick has the, 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 the provided language? Yeah, and if, if uh, I move to delegate authority to the superintendent and or his designee to approve a contract award for job number 21 backslash 066 DR adolescent recovery support and counseling services for HCDE for a period of 8 18 2021 through 8 17 2022 to delegate authority for HCDE superintendent and or his designee to negotiate finalize and execute a service contract and bring the final contract to the board for ratification at the September 15th 2021 regular board meeting. So it's been moved by Trustee Dick and seconded by Trustee Cantu. Any discussion? Just a quick description of these services and what we're getting for these. Yes, sir. Um, so this is the component of Fortis where we actually contract out to provide the actual clinical therapy service for helping our adolescents with recovery. The reason why the um, action item is written in that way is it's time sensitive because school is starting and we're probably just a few days out of finalizing what the contract looks like and want to get it implemented as soon as possible and that's sooner than the next board meeting, especially with school starting on Monday. And so we put an RFP out at the end of this past year, wanting to just shop out for different services, uh, either to stay in the same direction that we were going in with Turning Point or to bring in someone new. And so we've had a pretty good response. And, uh, we just need to tighten that up. Any other discussions or questions or discussions? Seeing none, we're moving for a vote. All in favor? Pass it unanimously. All right, we'll now move on to agenda item 6G1, uh, which is the, the approval uh, of the continuation of the contract between Harris County Department of Education in Houston Galveston Area Council. So it's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Trustee Cantu? I wanted to get a kind of an overview. I know this is a, the annual contract with HGAC. Just wanted to hear from the administration about an overview of this. And I know there was a, a couple of 2.5 million in additional funding. I didn't know if that ties into this or not. To, to uh, account for that, uh, for those funds. Any other questions or discussion? So there's nothing new with this uh, contract. This is, I mean, it's a really big contract with HGAC. Yeah. That's why you see a ratification, and so um, when we get it, it's like starting, get it started, and then signed. In the you know uh, in the, the following month, uh, so what we put the agenda item as as soon as we receive it, and then secondly, we amend the uh, any budget amendment that we need to do to uh, account for the funds and the expenditures associated with that contract. What you see in the uh, in the agenda is that it has to be broken down by the type of function, whether it's uh, EL civics or is it a federal grant. So that's why you see the, the different in in the funds. But overall, it's the, this is the total of all that. Any other questions or discussion on this item? See, uh, seeing none, we'll move it for a vote. All in favor? Passes unanimously. 
All right, we will now move on to agenda item 7A. Consider approval for, of the ACDE Schools Division 2021-2022 Student Code of Conduct. Is there a motion? It's been, I believe it's been moved by Trustee Cantu and seconded by Trustee Hinojosa. Um, uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move for a vote. All in favor? Passage unanimously. Moving to agenda item 7B, consider approval uh, slash ratification of the project, uh, del uh, project delivery slash contract methods for the new AB East Can uh, Campus Adult Education Project, High Point East Project, and Irvington Renovation Project. Is there a motion? By Trustee Hinojosa, is it seconded by Trustee Cantu. Any discussion? Seeing none, or is, okay, Trustee, okay, <laughs> Trustee Dick was ready for the vote. Uh, uh, all in favor, <laughs> passage unanimously. Uh, agenda item 7C, consider approval of the service agreement with HTS uh, Inc, Inc, uh, Inc Consultants uh, to provide construction materials testing. Hinojosa and seconded by Trustee Cantu. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Norris, both uh, item B and C were also already approved by the PFC uh, uh, committee already as well. Seeing no discussion, we'll move for a vote. All in favor? Passage unanimously. Agenda item 7D, consider approval of a, uh, of a contract renewal option for job number 20-038KJ. This deals with the cover government relations ser uh, services to Hillco Partners. For the period of uh, from September 2021 to August 31st, uh, 2023, uh, the amount of 20, 280, uh, $280,200 uh, plus expenses and delegate authority to the superintendent to negotiate, finalize, and execute contract for such services. It's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Can we just clarify that we have discussed this previously so. in a properly posted meeting of the governmental relations committee right okay you know me in the open meetings act gotta make that clear yes yes we did have this discussion in the governmental meetings act so i mean in the governmental meetings uh meeting last week so yes any other di any discussion seeing none we'll move it for a vote all in favor passes unanimously uh, we'll move on to agenda item 7e consider approval to submit uh, uh, $569,025 partial waiver request in, of in-kind non-federal match, uh, match to the grant. This is to the de uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services offices, uh, uh, I would say Head Start offices and early Head Start expansion and early uh, Head Start child care partnership programs uh, in the fiscal year 2020 to 2021. It's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Second, second by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Trustee Hinojosa asks for explanation. Oh, this is a uh, in-kind waiver. Uh, all the federal grants require a local in-kind match, and we're requesting a waiver from, from the match. And because these are co construction projects, we require that, and they're, they're likely uh, going to grant them to, to HCD. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, discussion or que questions or discussions? Seeing none, we'll move it for a vote. All in favor? Passage unanimously. On to agenda item 7F, consider approval of the expenditures which have been previously procured and are expected to aggregate to $50,000 or more for the, 20, uh, for the physical year 2022 as required under policy CH local for various HDE divisions for an aggregate amount not to exceed 24,700, I'm sorry, $24,701,500. This is the annual estimate uh, projected uh, in anticipation for the year. Is there a motion? It's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Uh, all of these items have been uh, uh, procured under state law, and so these are items that are going to accumulate to 50000 or more during the year. We haven't entered into any of these agreements, but this is anticipating for, for the next year. All right. Any other 
Questions or discussion? Seeing none, we'll move it for a vote. All in favor? Passage unanimously. S uh, 7G, consider approval of certificate, uh, certification of the anticipated tax co collection rate uh, and the anticipated debt collection rate for the for excess debt collections and also the calculation of the no new revenue rate and voter approved rates by Harris County tax, uh, tax Assessor slash Collector. It's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? second. It's been seconded by Trustee Davis. It looks like we're getting some information for a discussion. <coughs> uh, so you have a handout on the tax rate value, uh, tax rate calculations, uh, truth in taxation uh, law. Uh, and this is the uh, PowerPoint that uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier today that I was going to review. So let me back, uh, go back uh, a couple slides. Um, our current values came in at 459944948 That's the certified value. And then you have uncertified value of $61 billion, a total of $521 billion. That's the number that we're, that we're looking at. So in the spreadsheet that you have uh, in front of you, uh, we projected 525 billion. We're at 521 billion that is being projected. The uh, tax rate that was uh, um, um, included in our budget was 0 .004993. Uh, we're recommending a tax rate of 0 .004990. Uh, it is uh, above the non new revenue rate of 0 .004817. Uh, but it is below the voter approved rate of 0 0.005202, which you see this in the right corner uh, of the spreadsheet. Uh, and so the values are going to be a yielding uh, tax levy of 25 million, uh, 816,269 in um, uh, current uh, levy. And then when you add the delinquent, it's 26 million, 131,269. And so the, there's two parts to this. One is to allow the, uh, the, the tax assessor collector to, uh, to calculate and to provide you with the values and the, the rates. And then the next agenda item is to propose a rate of 0 .004990, which then will trigger a public hearing and then before you can adopt it uh, a month from today. Any questions for Dr. Mesqua? And this this is actually, uh, this really is geared towards both this agenda item and the next one. Yes, yes. it's basically both of the uh, agenda items. The information is for both agenda items. Right. So any any questions for Dr. Mesqua? Sick. okay, Trustee Cantu. So the proposed rate? It's a point zero zero four nine nine zero. Right, so that's point zero 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 three less than last year. Right. Okay. Trustee Dick. We're doing a lot of good for Harris County. We've managed to increase our services in a frugal manner and reduce taxes. So I'm very proud of Harris County Department of Education. Any other questions for Dr. Mesqua? Seeing none, we re uh, looks like we're ready to move in for a vote. All in favor? All right, passage unanimously. And it moves us to uh, the related agenda item uh, uh, 7H, consider approval of the 2021 certified property values and the submission of the, new, uh, the no <coughs> new uh, revenue tax rate and voter approval tax rate using the certified estimate of taxable value and a plan to adopt the tax rate of uh, Point zero zero four nine nine zero for the tax year of uh, the tax year twenty twenty one, in accordance with the truth in tax laws codified in chapter twenty six and amended by the eighty seventh legislature. It's been moved by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Seconded by Trustee Hinojosa. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Passage unanimously. Uh, next is agenda item 7i. This is considered as a second reading and a, a final approval of the following revised local tax policies. That's CH, CQB, CV, DCD, 
DCE, DEC, FFAC, GKA. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, board Council? Board Council, do we do? Is this one of those ones that we just need to? This is second reading, and so there needs to be a motion okay. to approve. Okay, okay yes, just so. checking. Okay, so this is the second reading, so we're, this does require approval. So is there a motion? Been, been, uh, there's a motion by Trustee Cantu. Is there a second? Seconded, Seconded by Trustee Duhan. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Put your hand up. Passes unanimously. All right. Um, J, item J is consider approval of uh, resolution authorizing leave days for employees' absences related to a positive COVID-19 test. It's been moved by Trustee Duhon. Is there a second? Second, second by Trustee Davis. Any discussion? We are requesting that the board provide staff with an additional five days of leave related to testing positive for COVID in an effort to um, discourage employees who may be sick and have exhausted their leave time for coming into work. So it's to continue to ensure we're maintaining a health and safe environment for our employees. So again, days for employees who test positive and demonstrate by providing proof of test results. Um, would receive five days for COVID leave. How did you come to five days? Um, just looking at um, absences of staff, five days tend to be, because normally you have to quarantine for 10 days, and normally weekends are counted in that. Um, so with weekends and five days, it would allow employees to almost complete the 10 quarantine days, isolation days. Not make it so that they could complete those days? Um, for the most part, five, well, four or nine. Now we do provide, again, we do provide employees with leave um, each school year. So this was just to help supplement the time for employees. But if the board desired to provide six as opposed to five to ensure that they had the full 10 days of leave, that's something that may be considered by the board. Question. You know, I'd, I'd humor eight because eight plus two is ten. So that I'd humor eight. Is that standard across? Have you looked at others, and is it the standard? Um, most school districts who are providing days, they tend to be about five days that they're providing. Now there are some that do a little bit more, but on average, it's about five. Usually three to five is what I'm seeing. So a lot of districts are not providing any additional leave. They just or whatever the leave in, is entitled under, you know, local leave, personal leave, et cetera. Many are not providing this additional supplemental leave, and but like Natasha said, what I'm seeing, at least in the Houston area, is anywhere from three to five days. Trustee Dick, just my response to that is, uh, for most districts, um, they aren't um, the teachers here. We care very much about because it's I'd say it's more challenging than the other districts as they're dealing with the uh, special needs and kind of um, it's a tough situation. So I'm very supportive of it being eight days. If other board members want to join me in that, I'm supportive of that. Trustee Davis. I want to add that I would like to make a decision not based off of what other organizations are doing, but what we find is the best for our staff. Okay. So with Trustee Duhon, who made the motion, and Trustee Davis, who seconded, if you both agree to amend the motion to approve the resolution with eight leave, additional eight leave days, um, then we can have a friendly amendment to the motion. Is that acceptable? Okay. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, looks like it's ready for a vote. Thank you. All in favor? Passes unanimously. That takes us to our last agenda item, uh, which is 7K. Um, and fr from what actually I, uh, I've actually been instructed by our board attorney to actually, before we uh, address this agenda item, we will, it's best to discuss it in an executive session, mainly just to get the, to get the legal update before we discuss the policy that we're, that we're looking at doing. So we're gonna have a, a short, a short uh, executive session to, dis uh, to discuss item 7K and, and whatever else is in the executive session. And then when we come back, we will, we will be properly updated on what the latest law that has been changed by the day 
is and uh, by the hour yeah by the hour is and then we can properly update you on what what steps we will be able to take after that so with at that with that we're at 219 we'll move to executive session oh sorry do we need a motion for executive session okay yeah we'll move for executive session at 219 p.m Are we okay? So, I will call us back into session at 3:40 p.m. Uh, we are now back from executive session, and now we have moved to agenda item 7K. Um, uh, this is the deliberation and possible action regarding HCDE's response to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I believe that Trustee Duhan has, I guess, uh, Trustee Duhan. We can move to speak on this and second to speak on this and then have anyone say anything that they like to say. Okay. Correct. So, yeah, so we, uh, so, so I guess we will open with a, is there a motion for uh, the possible action on? So uh, moved. Uh, or, moved or by Trustee Duhon. If you'd prefer if, if, if um, to have the actual motion written, that was written out, read for that motion and then there can be discussion. Okay. Okay. So the motion is just to discuss? Okay, just yeah. want to be clear. Okay. There's, there's a motion by Trustee Duhon. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Dick. Discussion. I know, President Norris, that you had some things you wanted to say. Would you like to do that? Um, well, and I, I guess I'll be, because I, I, uh, I'm elected and I guess I don't have to, I can be a little less politically correct with you guys, and I'm going to be very honest. This is a really crappy position to be in as a board, uh, a board member. Um, this, 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 uh, this whole situation has unfortunately become a political issue, and because it has, there has been a lot of things that have now gone beyond our control. Uh, there is, the, the law is a moving target right now. We've been advised by counsel that there are several, uh, there's a number of litigation pending. Uh, the law can actually change. Within the, within the hour, because uh, there is a federal lawsuit pending. Uh, there's a couple of lawsuits that are pending, dealing with Harris County that are pending. And no matter what we do today, the law can be, can be changed by the end of this meeting. Um, that being said, um, it, it really has been uh, problematic. Um, so, uh, and, and actually, the, the word that kept coming to mind, and, and this is a word that I remember my football coach using a lot with us in the locker room, it's, a, it's horse shit. And uh, excuse me, and I don't cuss very often, but I, that's, that is, when I was in class, when I taught in class, I swore for emphasis. And this, that is pretty much the situation that we have found ourselves in, both as a, not just as a board member to make a decision for this organization, but also as a parent with children in public school, one which is not able, old enough to be vaccinated. This is a decision that all, all what, 12 or 1300 boards around the state are going to have to deal with because this is what's going on. So I will say that as a board member, it really stinks. Um, I will say that some of the things that with, with the law going as it is, I will say the and particularly because pretty much everybody in the room are heads of the department. It, it's because our hands are tied in a lot of ways. It, it really will come on the department. We'll, we'll, we'll have some suggestions and we'll have some motions in a second far as what some actions are going to be. But specifically, and we talked to Superintendent Colbert, the, it's really a matter of the, the adults in the room. And we are, and, and pretty much everybody here are the leadership. And as we're really going to really look, we as board, and we don't have any say so, we still have say so with the superintendent, but we, we really look to you all and hope that we have a, a culture that 
promotes safety and health, health and safety, which is really the issue that is underlying everything. We, this is a really health issue. Unfortunately, it has become something different. So with all of that and me getting off my soapbox, um, I will mainly say that uh, we have a couple of, uh, we have been uh, advised by our council. I think we're going to have a couple of, uh, I think one or two motions that are going to uh, uh, result, uh, come as a result. Um, and, um, and, and also, let me say also, from what I understand, we've had like 16 positive cases that, that have come out of, out of this department in the last week. And one member of our staff who actually passed, what, like a week or two ago? So, uh, and our governor who has, who has put, made this a uh, decision a little trickier, actually has COVID himself and he has been vaccinated. So it, it is a very situ serious situation. And let me say that both not, not just as a board member, but just as a community member, make sure you guys are all protected. Please, 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 uh, please uh, protect yourself and do whatever you necessary, whatever, whatever's within the health guidelines, please do something to protect yourself. Cause I do not want to say any condolences to any of you. So I will say that. So all that being said, um, let me, let me, uh, we have have a motion that has been moved and seconded on the floor. Um, is there any other, dis I guess we're up for discussion. Any discussion? Trustee Dick? I just note that how I feel about this is I'm relying on the superintendent and I'm relying on everyone in this room, the department heads, to be adults. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're looking towards you to do the right thing. We're looking to the superintendent to do the right thing. I see you as, you're, you're our superintendent. You're my superintendent. And in and, and many ways, I look, you know, to you, I don't, I'm not there every day um, managing the, 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 everyone else that I don't want to be either. I have my own business I'm doing. But I'm relying on you and your, um, you know, your opinions. If you're saying everybody's voluntarily complying and everyone's being mature because they understand the weight of the situation, they understand that we're dealing with special needs children, they don't need anybody to tell them anything because they already know it and they're doing it. I mean, if, if, if that's what you're telling me, I'm going to rely on you because I'm trusting you as the superintendent. If you, t if you tell me something else, then I'm, again, I'm going to rely on what you say because you're our superintendent and I'm following you in this, right? And I, I do have a lot of faith as you and our superintendent. And I thank you for your leadership in this. You've done good leadership from the very beginning, from whenever we started the Because We Care program, right from the beginning. And I, I continue to rely on your, on your leadership at this point in time. It hadn't, nothing's changed. You, you know, I think you have done a good job, James. And I, I, continue to, I continue to stand behind you and thank you for your leadership during this, the, these difficult times. Any other uh, discussion from the trustees? Seeing none. Okay. So uh, seeing none, uh, is there, are there any other, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no need to move, um, apparently there's no need to vote on this, this item. Sir, because the, the motion was just to open the floor for discussion and, and discussion has been had and so okay. there's nothing to vote on. All right. Okay. That being the case, uh, Trustee Duhon. I would like to say that I had pulled some stats that I want to talk about with you all. 783 children were admitted to Texas hospitals with COVID-19 between July 1st and August 9th. Between August 4th and August 11th, cases in Texas doubled and they continue to rise daily. This is extremely serious. Nationwide, nearly 94,000 children have contracted COVID-19 last week. By design, HCDE serves some of the most vulnerable students in our county. Students have respiratory issues, sensory issues, which make it impossible to keep masks on them. Not to mention, Not to mention they have other medical conditions, often which make them particularly vulnerable. We cannot have our staff who interact with these students potentially infecting them. I consider it my duty to prioritize the safety of our students over everything else. And that includes repercussions from the state. 
I have weighed out the consequences and time and time again, potential death of a staff member or student outweighs repercussions, any repercussions which could be given to me or anyone that I'm making decisions for. And I have to do what I see as the right thing now. And that is everything possible to protect our staff and students. And the options don't end at masks. There are many options for protecting our students. It was mentioned multiple times that we're in, a, in between a rock and a hard place. And that's so very true. And I just have to say that for myself, the heaviest rock is the safety of our staff and students. And with that, I move to mandate masks for staff who are interacting with our vulnerable students. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? All right, seeing none, we will move the motion. The motion fails. On a pending motion. It wouldn't be the underlining the underlining motion that was pending about uh, discussing. The well, we already we already moved past that. You, you, I believe we have one more motion, and okay. so you you I there's certainly there's certainly additional time to provide comments. Okay. Trustee Davis. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Uh, this is a very sensitive issue, um, as I am a mother, and I am definitely worried about my family. The children. Our vulnerable, our vulnerable children here and staff at HCDE matters to me. The future of HCDE matters to me. However, I am thankful that Superintendent Colbert and the staff at HCDE has shown extreme safety measures when interacting with our children. Superintendent monitoring this daily especially again with our vulnerable children and addressing the cases that trustee duhan has mentioned i move to find that a public purpose including that it continues to provide a safe and secure environment for the hcde community is served by authorizing incentives incentives for campus and Head Start students and staff to practice healthy, safe measures and delegate authority to the, uh, to the superintendent or designee to spend an amount not to exceed $100,000 on such incentives to provide a safe and secure environment for the ACDE community, especially our vulnerable community our vulnerable kids. I'll second that. All right, so it's been moved by Trustee Davis and seconded by Trustee Cantu. Any discussion? It looks like Trustee Dick and then Trustee Canahosa. Okay, so, um, you know, as I said before, um, if the superintendent feels that there's, there's, there's some type of emergency that, that the staff, that the heads aren't complying, and we do need some type of some other you know repercussions we're happy to look at it and i'm happy to look at i'm happy to evaluate it and i'm probably the one on the board that's that's probably most against masks right but i'm I'll, i'm happy to consider it if it is an issue that that we aren't voluntarily complying which it appears to me that we're volunteering voluntarily complying um also i don't is that you know um if you watch the board meeting earlier I was the first one, or at least the second or third one, happily to extend the time period for people um, that had uh, that potentially had COVID to extend the, the, days, the days off from five to eight, because I think that's reasonable. The same way in psychology, I think it's more powerful to have a positive than a negative, meaning that if you want someone to do something, if you give them a positive reason to do it, it's more likely they're going to do it instead of giving, instead of forcing anybody to do it. Saying it in another way, positive, re, positive reinforcement is much more powerful and healthy than negative reinforcement. So I, and for those reasons, I'm very supportive of having some type of incentives 
that the superintendent, whatever you're, you have guidance. So, you know, you, you, whatever you believe is in your best judgment. I'm supportive of that because I'm supportive of the superintendent. Thank you. Oh. Trustee Hannah Hossa. So I just want to say that we have amazing people on this board, absolutely amazing people. And I wouldn't want to be in a rock and a hard place with any other people. Um, if this has to happen, I'd, I'd, I'd want to be with you. Uh, we, it, this was a very painful discussion and a very painful decision. Ultimately, we decided that it's important to protect the department so that there is an HCDE for our children to attend. There are, we, we can keep all of our programs and schools. And it was, it's, it's a very difficult decision to make, but ultimately um, we want to make sure that we still have an HCDE and that we um, can continue to move forward. And with the feedback from the superintendent that much of our staff and students are voluntarily complying we feel comfortable uh, moving forward with these incentives. Um, but as Trustee Dick mentioned, uh, we are prepared to take additional measures yeah. if the superintendent comes to us and says that there is a problem in that area. Um, but yeah, that's it, thank you. And, and also, as I mentioned earlier, the law may change. And, if, and one of the things we mentioned that was brought up in executive session is if the federal lawsuit is, approved, it is upheld against the uh, mandate, immediately Judge Hidalgo's order goes into effect, which means we will have to require masks. So that, is, that, that means, and we have no decision over that. That is, that is beyond our pay grade. That means it goes into effect immediately. So if, depending on what happens in the federal court, it is, it is very possible that we will have, you know, it's possible that the law may change and everybody has to be updated immediately. This may change. So th that is always a potential, um, a, that is always in the a potential in the background as this, this, this is continuing to change by the day and by the hour. Just to add, this motion comes from the positivity that our department has already shown and has exemplified safety measures here at ACDE. And again, like you said, if it changes, okay, yes. But we are so thankful to the staff, just looking around some. ACDE has implemented or have a culture that safety is number one here. Mm -hmm. And the superintendent will measure daily and, and give us hopefully that feedback that if we do have to act, that we will. Yeah, and, and, and particularly, and, and, and unfortunately, I guess it, it's, from what I understand, the, one of the bigger issues now is that the Delta variant is actually way more contagious. I think they said somewhere on the order of three or four times contagious. And that's, that's really the issue, that it's spreading faster than it was before. So it's almost a, it's almost a different scenario because it's moving much faster. We're, so I'm, I'm super glad that, we're, that everybody is, is, is at least on, the, on, the, on board for understanding the importance of safety. Um, uh, my, my nose has been sweating under this mask the whole time, but it's, you know, I, I am okay with going back to it uh, bec just because it's, it's, it's one of those things that, hey, it, whatever's necessary. So I, I, am, um, I, am, I, am, I echo everybody's opinion that I'm glad that, we're, we're, that, that the, the idea of safety is paramount at this department. And I just encourage everybody, especially the leadership, to, to continue to make sure that that, that is a, a priority because, you know, that, that's what we want. Thank you, President um, Norris. I'll just say that this is the most times the name word superintendent has been used <laughs> in one item in, in 12 months. Um, but surely, you know, um, I'll get my thought provokers together, and I think that we will come up with a, a dynamic approach that meets the expectations of the board. Um, our staff is a very proud staff, and we consider ourselves a family. And um, they're very responsible and responsive. And so um, I think that we can certainly continue to exceed y'all's expectations. Uh, and our number one priority is to keep all of our students and staff safe. And they're very much dialed into that. So uh, unfortunately that this issue has been weaponized as a political tool and kids are made to suffer for it. And so we have people who are ded dedicated to the cause of public service and being champions for children. 
and so we will protect them in the process of protecting ourselves. So rest assured that that will happen. So I appreciate the lively conversation that we've had in the executive session, mm -hmm. and I think we've covered this issue in every angle possible. And uh, I can just tell our staff that's watching that uh, you should have comfort that uh, many, all of our board members' values were demonstrated in closed session, and y'all are at the top of it. So thank you for the discussion and your support. It, any other discussion on this issue? All right, it is, uh, uh, with all that being said, it will put it for a vote. All in favor? Passes unanimously. All right, that is the last item on the agenda. Uh, I will now. Future agenda item. Oh, sorry. Uh, number, yeah, I'm sorry. We'll move on to uh, action item number 10. Uh, are, there, are there any discussion of uh, possible action regarding future items? Trustee Duhon? I would like to discuss further funding tools for teachers to, at the very least, fund what is left with the wait list. It, you're referring to for this year the the teachers currently on the waiting list okay no, future agenda yeah any other items trustee dick well, i would agree with that as well um but also i'd note that uh there are thirteen thousand teachers alone in hisd um this is, uh, I'm glad we started this project. I think it's going to take us a while to actually get to where we need to be in this project. Um, because I mean, there's, just in HISD, there's 13,000. So that would be, if we're doing a $100 voucher, it's $1.3 million. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm hopeful we'll get, it will exceed that amount at some point. I don't think we'd do, be able to do that immediately. Um, so I, I, I agree with Ms. Duhon. Also, I like that we were, we, we have taken, um, I, I want to congratulate the, the department in of itself for, you know, uh, starting the educator, I mean, starting the employee of the month. I thought that was, a, I think that's good. I think we need to showcase the talent we have at the Department of Education. I hope we continue to do that monthly. I'd ask the, the department to consider doing some, maybe an, broaden it up too. Uh, to maybe have educator of the month and include people that are non HCD D, HCD in that maybe it's not the right time maybe it is the right time with all the craziness out there we need more positive stuff so I, I, I always thought you know um, recognizing people and their hard work is something that the department could do and I like it that we are um, we're doing the same thing with students and I hope we continue each month to recognize the students that we have or that that are that that interact with the department so I think we should continue to recognize students each month. I'm hopeful we do that. And maybe, I mean, that, I think that's a good start. Um, with the broader, uh, the, the, the broader strategy, the broader purpose is that HCDE should focus on ways to empower others to be an inspiration for Harris County. And I think you're doing that by uh, recognizing, um, you know, our staff and also recognizing students. I was blown away by both of them. So I'd like that to be regular and also expanded. That that's that's what that's what my view is, if our meetings are are ways to you know further further uh, you know um, grow education in Harris County. That's all I have. All right. Any other potential future agenda items? Seeing none, I'll return the motion to adjourn. I move it. Been moved by Trustee Cantu, seconded by Trustee Davis. All in favor? Passage unanimously. We'll end at 4.03 p.m.